I'm building more of my amateur radio equipment for my Rediscovering Radio project and I've just made this transformer for the QCX Plus 40 meter kit. That's the QCX Plus, not the Mini, that I'm on now. I'm going to finish testing it for continuity in a moment with my meter, but before I do that, let's take a look at what's coming up. In this video, I'm going to start the build of the QCX Plus kit and I'll run through how I get started systematically to make sure everything runs smoothly. And I'll look at how to make sure the toroid coils are wound and fitted correctly first time. Here's the transformer fitted to the PCB. Before I look at making the coils, I'm just going to test this one for continuity one more time. To test it, I'm using a multimeter set to diode mode which just means that if the two probes are connected, then the meter bleeps, one of the most useful bits of test equipment you can have. So first, I put the probes on either end of the main primary winding, and the contacts for these are on either side of the circle. The three small windings are spaced in between and run from the edge to inside the circle of the toroid. They all connected, so the soldering and clearing of the enamel from the wire was a success. Making and fitting this transformer is quite fiddly, so let's take a look at how it's done. Transformer T1 has a main primary winding and a smaller primary winding, plus two more secondary windings. Each band has a different number of turns, and for this 40 meter version of the kit, there are 33 turns for the big coil, plus three sets of five for the smaller ones. The instructions suggest winding all of them in one go using twisted loops to separate them, and that works well. The starting point is also important, as some leads are finishing outside the toroid and some inside, and they need to be correctly oriented to fit on the PCB. To get this to happen, it's necessary to start on the left with the wire going over and down into the centre of the toroid. I found the process of step-by-step -step cutting and soldering the loops in place a bit awkward, so I started with one side of the main primary soldered on to stabilise everything, and then worked round the toroid one coil at a time, cutting the loops and then pulling each small coil into place and soldering it in. It can seem a bit confusing at first, but the layout of the coils is quite straightforward. The main primary goes horizontally across the PCB, and the smaller windings fit inside it, being soldered vertically with one leg of each inside and the other outside the toroid. For the soldering, I've stopped trying to scrape these short leads of enamel, and instead I raise the temperature of my soldering iron a bit, use plenty of tacky flux, and apply heat for a while all round the enamelled wire before applying the solder. This makes the continuity check essential, and if there's any doubt about contact, a bit more heat and flux should fix it. Now let's take a look at the other three coils. While making the 20 meter QCX mini kit, I had to desolder and adjust the number of turns on these coils, L1, 2 and 3. I realised that this can be avoided by making sure during the coil preparation that the initial inductance of these coils can be moved up or down by pushing the turns together or apart around the toroid. This isn't always possible if you just make them as suggested in the parts list, as there can be some variation in inductance in the components and they tend to end up at the upper end of the range. So now I'm making another kit with a similar filter circuit I'm going to follow up on this tip and get them set up with a suitable number of turns. To do this, I've wound all three coils with the suggested number of turns first and then tested them with my peak inductance meter. I realised that there is the possibility of variation both in the inductance and in the measurement, but I'm sure that the process is sufficiently accurate for me to end up in the range required so that the inductance can be adjusted to give optimum RF power. I've removed or added turns as necessary at this stage to save awkward desoldering later on. Each coil is now at or near the suggested inductance with the turns in a slightly spread configuration 
so that they can be pushed together or spread apart to raise or lower the inductance. So with L1, L2 and L3 ready and labelled, I can move on with the kit building. Some time taken at the start of a kit building process like this can save a huge amount of time overall and make a successful outcome much more likely. So, as with the QCX Mini, I've taken some time to read the instructions carefully and print out the parts list. After checking the parts, I put them into small bags and labelled them so it's easy to find each one as they are needed. It can be easy to make a mistake with metal film resistors especially, with the coloured bands on a blue background, and it's so much quicker to have them ready and not to have to keep looking through a pile of components for each resistor or capacitor. Once again, I've condensed the instructions into a step-by-step -step checklist, so if I work out of order or have to stop and come back, I can immediately see which components have been fitted already. The QCX Plus is ready to make now, and when it's complete, I'm sure it's going to make a really useful addition to my QRP setup. I really enjoyed making the Mini too, and this one is fun. There are more components to solder, but it's a bit less compact, which makes the process easier. I'm having fun still with rediscovering radio. I'll be back soon with more videos about this build and about other aspects of that process. I still haven't made a contact yet, but I guess that after 40 years, a little bit longer isn't going to make much difference. I hope you're finding these videos helpful and that you'll join me in the next one. Thanks for watching, and now I'm going to press on with a bit more soldering.